Hi there, I'm Angela Sharp, and welcome to The Daily Mix. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. You know who had a, probably a pretty great weekend? Eric Church, and I want to tell him congratulations on his Entertainer of the Year win at the CMA Awards. This was so exciting for me because I used to know this guy. So about a thousand years ago, I was on a reality TV show with the blonde that you see there on the photo, and I met that guy. Yeah, that's what Eric Church used to look like with his blonde tips back in the day. That was actually before he even had a record deal. He had a writing deal, but no record deal at that time. I was actually at the showcase where he got his record deal. So over those few years, we kind of were able to kind of stay close and as friends. And yes, I had my stomach autographed by him once. Yeah, I know, right? I just love seeing him succeed because back in the day, you could get right up in front by the stage like that and see everything up close. And now he's selling out football stadiums. So I think that's so exciting. So a huge congratulations to Eric Church on his Entertainer of the Year win. And if you notice, I'm super dressed up today. I always go to the CMA Awards. I've been for like the last 10 years and I bought this dress with my fancy sleeves for the CMA Awards. But, um, you know, COVID said, no, Angela, you can't go. So there was no fans in the stands. And of course, Eric would win when none of his fans could actually be in the stadium. But, you know, I figured I'd dress up today and say, hey, congratulations. <laughs> Later on in the show, I'm going to have Lynn Marie Alexandra. She's got a book, The Hill, that is it's actually out right now, which is actually a really interesting book about kind of everything that goes on in the hill that, you know, outsiders like me don't get to experience, but the insiders do get to experience. Anyway, I'll let her tell you about it later on in the show. Let's get started with today's Daily Mix. I have to congratulate Hazelwood West grad Devin Williams. I love congratulating people, but this is awesome. After taking home the National League Reliever of the Year Award, the Milwaukee Brewers reliever has now won the National League Rookie of the Year Award. This is so exciting to see somebody from St. Louis making it big in the big leagues. I just kind of love that. I kind of started the show with Eric Church, and I love this for this kid here, especially for the people who knew him kind of before. You get to see all their dreams come true, and I just absolutely love that. You know who else is a step closer to maybe not his major dream, but a cool dream? Nelly. Nelly is one step closer to the Dancing with the Stars finals. The semifinals are tonight, and guess what? That's right, Nelly's still in. Last week, he and his pro partner, Daniela, did a jazz dance to California Love that put them among the top six moving on. Now, this week is a double elimination, and the pair will be doing two dances each. This includes the jive for the Nelly. The stars take the dance floor tonight at 7 p.m. and hopefully we'll see him move on to the finals next week. What I love about this is he's up in those finals against some people who have been very open with the fact that they took dance as kids or they're taking dance now. And, you know, ballroom dance, I just don't think has been Nelly's forte. And he's really doing a great job. And you can kind of tell that he's having a ton of fun when he does it. And I think that's even the better part is that he's having fun while he's doing it. So I think we all need to vote because I'd really like Nelly to stay in for the finals. Now, another St. Louisan made her TV debut this weekend on the Food Network's new series, Candyland. Cake artist Devin Williamson is on one of the five teams competing on the baking competition show hosted by Kristen Chenoweth. So if you haven't heard about the show, basically it's based on the game Candyland and the teams have to create themed sugar masterpieces and they make their way through Peppermint Forest, Chocolate Mountain, and the Lollipop Woods and beyond. The team that makes the King, makes it to King Candy's castle wins the game and $25,000. I don't know about you, but I wanna eat all of the things that I'm showing you on the screen. Um, I can't bake, but how fun it would be there just to like, you know, lick all the lollipops. Now, that's a pretty cool thing. So episode one is actually gonna air again tonight at 11 and on Thursday at 9 p.m. 
and then a new episode will air on Sunday night at eight. So congratulations to her. And of course, I just love, you know, shouting out people from St. Louis, making it big. Do you. Now, this is a little bit more serious. Did you know that about 20% of Americans are deaf or hard of hearing? The Travelers Protective Association of America has made it their mission to help those dealing with hearing loss. And this Thursday, TPA will be hosting its first Sounds of St. Louis awareness event. St. Louis has been chosen as the organization's hub and they hope to bring awareness to the TPA Hearing Trust Grant program that helps give more people the chance to experience a life of sound. The free virtual event will be held this Thursday, November 19th at 12 and 7 p.m. You can pre-register and learn more at tpahq.org. Now also happening this Thursday, executives from some of our region's top companies will be giving up their beds for the night to help give more nights of shelter to homeless youth. The executive sleep out is Covington House, Missouri's largest fundraiser. So far, they've raised $300,000 of their $450,000 goal, which means if you are able to give, this is something you probably want to give to. This year event is taking place virtually and the need to hit their goal and spread away rareness is greater than ever. To learn more about Sleep Out and how you can help youth facing homelessness, visit stlouis.executivesleepout.org. If you're driving, you know, taking a road trip, driven down South Kings Highway, McCausland, or North Lindbergh, you may be curious about some new billboards that have recently popped up. They're part of public art collaboration by the Luminary and St. Louis Made Movement titled, I Watch for Good News, I Work with Folks to Create Good News. That's a long title, but I love what they're doing. Several local artists were commissioned to create the eight billboards to convey messages of peace, hope, and justice. If you haven't seen them yet, be sure to keep an eye out next time you're traveling on one of those roads. You can watch for more good news by following STL Made and the Illuminary online. All right, who doesn't love a good pizza? Well, me, I don't love pizza, but I know a lot of humans, most humans love pizza, and what's better to them than a whole week of pizza? This Tuesday kicks off the first ever St. Louis Pizza Week. More than 15 area restaurants will be offering pizza specials all week long. So you can treat yourself to a different pizza every night if you wanted. And be sure to grab your pizza passport. That's right, as you make your way through the participating pizza joints, every time you get a stamp, you'll have a chance to win a prize. Four or more stamps get you a chance to win the Pizza Week prize pack. You can also post your Pizza Week pics with the hashtag STL Pizza Week for even more chances to win prizes. St. Louis Pizza Week runs November 17th through the 23rd. You can find all the details on Instagram and Facebook and at stlpizzaweek.com. Now St. Louis and John Hamm has a new movie coming out this December called Wild Mountain Time. Now it's based on the play Outside Mulliger and it's been a lot of buzz since the trailer dropped, but unfortunately that buzz has been focused on the actor's Irish accents or really their attempts at Irish accents. <laughs> Luckily for Ham, he plays an American, so he's kind of safe. But other than that, you know, we'll have to see. But other than all that, you know, the accent thing, it actually looks like it might be pretty good. Check this out. Welcome to Ireland. Once upon a time, there were two farms. The Maldoon farm where Rosemary lived, and right down the road was my farm where my son Anthony asked his lonely question of the stars. Why did you make me so? Rosemary Muldoon yeah! besotted with love. There's these green fields, and there's us. Whatever that is, it holds me here. Oh, what is this, those things? It's not normal. I don't care. You take after John Kelly, and that man was mad as the full moon. Drowned himself. He fell in. He had a rock tied to his neck. Rosemary, we're no one to each other quite the while now. Would you marry me? <laughs> Are you going to leave the farm to Anthony? I don't see a clear path. From where to where? From me to you. My cousin is coming. What do you think? 
It's the finest car I've ever seen. Get out from the farm, turn American. I'm waiting for that one. What are you waiting for? Me, I don't wait. I do like that. You should come to New York sometime. Anthony will never marry. If it comes to that, I'll freeze my eggs. You should freeze your whole body if you're waiting for that one. Will you call a sequel? You ever had a dream since you were a child and you couldn't let it go. So you put this gate between us. Has your dream made you happy or miserable? You kissed him! It was he that kissed me! That's what's got him worked off! I don't understand you people. Why do you make everything so hard? You just seem to accept these crazy things. I don't like a fight. Well, who does? Half of Ireland, just not me. If my true love, he were gone, I would surely find another. Anthony, time is running out. Oh. What is love? Is it a quest? What are you doing? A madness. How many days do we have while the sun shines? It's not shining. I believe that it is. Will you call a go? Well, I think that looks like a movie that maybe we might want to check out and then we can get back here later and talk about it. And if you take a look now, I'm right here in my magical Zoom box and I'm very excited. I've got Lynn Marie Alexandra here with me talking about the book that she wrote about the hill. So I'm kind of excited about this because you know, when anybody from out of town comes to St. Louis, they always talk about things they want to see and the hill is always on the list, but you actually grew up in the hill. Yeah, yes I did. I grew up on the hill. So yes, I I went to, uh, I, I did not go to St. Ambrose. I always tease my, my fellow Hillites that I am a refugee from St. Aloysius which was the neighboring school. <laughs> but indeed, I grew up on the hill, as did both of my parents. So yeah, you're you're a multi-generational family that's lived right there on the hill. Yes. And that's what inspired you to write this book? Oh, um, it, there was a lot of inspiration for writing the book. Um, it was kind of a project that got handed down. So Rio, Rio Vitale, who made the documentary that's upcoming again on um, KCPTV, he started the project and got overwhelmed with doing the book as well as the video. Moved on to Joe Di Gregorio, who wanted to have a compendium of a bunch of people writing their memoirs, if you will. And he realized very quickly it was like herding cats. So, so I, as the archivist, had all of the information pretty much at my fingertips here at the Hill Neighborhood Center. And so I was invited to, to just write out the history. And so I was able to do that because I had all of the information here with me. And so it was an invitation, but it's also a passion. I've been the director of the Hill Neighborhood Center and the archivist for um, things that are donated to the Hill, documenting Hill history. I've been doing that for five years now. What do you think it is about the Hill that just kind of intrigues people, not even people from St. Louis, but people for even from outside St. Louis, they're so intrigued by the Hill? Well, Italian culture, I mean, how can you not love it, right? The food and the music and just the, the general happiness that, that revolves around being Italian. Um, and that we have 30, 37 places to get a bite to eat in our small little square mile. So that in and of itself is enough to draw anybody. <laughs> and, and then also for people who are interested in history, we're a, a long-standing community. We're founded, if you will, by the Italians in the late 1800s. So we, we've been around for a long time and we've managed to keep some of our ethnic um, history in, in place. And I think that's intriguing as well. Well, I, I do, I find that kind of one of the most interesting parts because like so much of St. Louis, everything is kind of a hodgepodge of, of people and community. But for some reason, the Hill has been able to keep a lot of you know their original heritage kind of intact. That's true, that's true. There are a few dozen families that are, that are now working in their fourth or fifth generation that are still here. And, and those families are networked either by blood or by law. And, and so there, there is that sort of um, stability that, that we enjoy here. But what's even better was um, during the, the flight to the suburbs in the 70s through the 90s, some of those children who were born in the suburbs of Italian families have come back to the hill. 
And so now we're having a, a, a renaissance, if you will, of new, the new blood who with Italian heritage is coming back to the Hill. And then we're also getting new people who come to the Hill because of what it offers. I mean, the, the stability, the, the camaraderie, the community and, and the church and the schools. So all of that together brings in people who aren't necessarily of Italian heritage, but enjoy being in the community and they participate in the community. Now, I totally understand why somebody from the Hill neighborhood or even, you know, in our little hodgepodge here in St. Louis, we want to check out your book. But why would somebody maybe from outside our realm be interested in reading your book about the Hill? Well, it's really an amazing story. The, the Hill is over 100 years old as a community, as an identified community. and. We are Italian, of course, and that's what holds us together, but it's also about our institutions and our customs and our heritage and also our, our institutions like the church or um, the, the school, both the schools, the Villa and St. Ambrose, and, and the organizations that we've had. So some of these organizations are life, lifelong. Some of the men and women have joined the organization when they were in their teens, and they still belong to them well into their 90s. So it's those kinds of things that hold a community together. And I think they can be instructional for anyone who wants to look at how do we build a stronger neighborhood, a stronger community. And this is kind of a blueprint for that. Oh, I just love that. And you've already had a few book signings, but you have some more book signings on the way, right? Yes, we do. On December 4th at Abigail on South, Abigail's on Southampton, it's a gift shop. Um, she is graciously hosting us. But in addition to that, if anyone comes to the Hill Neighborhood Center, it's 1935 Marconi. If they come to the Hill Neighborhood Center, I will sign a book for them right there because I'm here from 10 to three on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Well, I just love it. So it's kind of an open-ended book signing. So if somebody wanted to order that book, how could they do that? They can do that by going to www.hillstl.org. And then they can also go to Reedy Press's website. Reedy Press did the layout and the design of the book. It's a beautiful book and they did an amazing job with it. And so they also have their website at Reedy Press. You can get one from them too. But of course, you can get one from me if you come and get it signed out, signed if you like, if you purchase it from the Hill Neighborhood Center, which results in a donation as well to the Hill Neighborhood Center. And I'll sign it. Oh, and so you've got them right there. Yes, absolutely. Oh, well, yeah, that's even better. Kind of a one-stop shop for somebody's Christmas needs right there for you. That's right. That's right. And we also have other items for sale as well. We have Hill-related cards and we have um, teddy bears that have that sing O Solo Mio, which is an Italian song. And so we have we have a hand-carved crosses as well. And so those things we offer at the Hill Neighborhood Center. And, and those pro, part of the sale, the proceeds from those sales come back to as a donation to the center and to the neighborhood organization. Well, I just love that. Lynn Marie, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. And you guys make sure you check out her book about the Hill, the Hill, the Italian American neighborhood. You can definitely check that out. And after you do that, make sure you follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And of course you can drop us a line at the Daily Mix at stltv.net. We wanna hear from you. That's going to do it for the Daily Mix. We keep it right here on STL TV and Experience St. Louis. See you next time.